kid, shackle and cold, fetter and chain, dungeon of stone, all not in vain, but there's enough love. Spite of ye all, he is free, he is free. Oh, do ye hold, pretty wood as I am. The poor wit and the rich counsellor. A poor wit being unhungered did meet a well-fed counsellor. Marry fool, quoth the counsellor. Indeed, cried the poor wit, in that I've eaten naught these last two days, I do wither away and that right rapidly. The counsellor laughed hugely and gave him a sausage. <laughs> that counsellor is easier to please than my new master, the lieutenant. I would like to take post under that counsellor. Ah, uh, tis but melancholy mummy when poor, jilted, heartbroken Jack Point must needs turn to Hugh Ambrose for original light humour. Ah, oh, Master Point. <laughs> ah, friend jailer. Jailer that was, jailer that never shall be more. Jailer that jailed not, or the jail if jail he did. So and jailer like it was, but jelly jailing or jailing in joke. But no joke to him, who by his own jailer like jailing did so jeopardize his jailership. Come, take heart, laugh, smile, wink, twinkle. Thou tormentor that tormentest none. Thou racker that rackest not. Thou picture out of place. Come, take heart, be merry as I am. As I am. What? It's well for thee to laugh. Thou hast a good post, and hast cause to be merry. Cause? Have we not all cause? <laughs> Is not the world a big butt of humour into all who will may drive a gimlet? <laughs> See, I'm a salaried wit. Is there aught in nature more ridiculous? A poor, dull, heartbroken man who must needs be merry, lest his wit must rejoice. <laughs> Lest he starve, who must jest you, jibe, you quip, you crack, you wreck you, with you from day to day, from hour to hour, from year to year, lest he dwindle, perish, starve, pine, and die. <laughs> Why, when there's naught else to laugh at, I laugh at myself till I ache for it. Yet I often thought that a jest is calling would suit me to a hair. Thee would suit thee, thou dithead and crossbones. <laughs> I, I've a pretty wit. A light, very joyous wit, spiced with anecdotes of prison cells and the torture chamber. <laughs> a very delicate wit. I've tried it on many a prisoner, and there have been some who smiled. Oh, it's not easy. It's not difficult. It's not easy to make a prisoner smile, and it should not be too difficult to be a good jester, seeing that thou art one. Difficult? <laughs> Nothing easier. Attend. 
and I will prove it to thee. Oh, a private buffoon is a light hearted loon if you listen to popular rumor. From the morn to the night, he's so joyous and bright, and he travels with wind and good humor. He's acquainted to temper, he throws it in verse, and yet people forgive his transgressions. That old water tools, that old family fools, must have said if they not their professions. That old water tools, half a dozen babies, that old family fools, and whatever decree. Must have said if they not their professions. If you wish to succeed as a jest, you'll need to consider each person's auricular. What is all right for me, my quite scandal I see, for C is so very particular. And D may be dumb and he's very thick skull, is as empty as brains as a label. While F is F sharp, and he'll cry with a cup. Wait, you your best joke from his cranium. When you're human, they feel like you can't get yourself good. But it does put you out of your person's as own. I've known that I'll jump from his cradle. If your master is surly from getting up early and tempers are short in the morning, an inopportune joke is enough to provoke him to give you at once one morning. And if you refrain, he is at you again, for he likes to get money for money. He will ask then and there, with an insolent stare, if you know that you're paid to be fun. Or it adds to the task of a lady next place, when your prince will ask for the scowl of his face. Do you know that you're paid to be funny? <laughs> Comes a bishop, maybe, or a solemn DD, or be word of his anger provoking. But to knock on his hair, stick wounds in his chair, he don't understand practical cooking. Though the jests you crack have an orthodox knack, you may get a man's mouth from the sages. But should they by chance be imported from France? Ha <laughs> ha! Of a crowd, he stuffed out of your wings. As a general ruler, you see a big wench of a family fault, as it jumps is too French. Of a crowd, he stuffed out of your wings. Though your head it may rack with a bilious attack and your senses with too thick you're losing. Don't be mopey and flat, they can't find you for that, just as long as you're quaint and amusing. Though your wife ran away with a soldier that way and took with her your trifle of money, bless your heart, they don't mind. They're exceedingly kind. They don't blame you as long as you're fine. It's a comfort to feel that you're punished. And though you suffer a deal, they don't mind it a bit. They don't blame you as long as you're fine. And so that would be a jester, eh? Oh. My sweetheart, Elsie Maynard, was secretly wedded to this Fairfax. Half an hour ere he escaped. Oh, she did well. She did nothing of the sort. So hold thy peace and perpend. Now, whilst he is alive, she is dead to me, and I to her, and my jests and jokes notwithstanding, I'm the saddest and sorriest dog in England. Thou art a very dull dog indeed. <clears throat> if thou would swear that thou didst shoot this Fairfax as you tried to swim across the river, it needs but the discharge of an arquebus on a dark night, and that he sank and was seen no more, <laughs> I'll make thee the very Archbishop of Jesters, and that in two days' time. Now what sayest thou? I am to lie? Heartily. But thy lie must be a lie of circumstance, which I will support with the testimony of ears, eyes, and uh, tongue. And thou wilt qualify me as a jester? As a jester amongst jesters! <laughs> Nay more, I will teach you all my original songs, my own self-constructed riddles, my ingenious paradoxes! <laughs> Nay more, I shall reveal to thee the source from whence I get them now, what sayest thou? I say, if it is but a lie thou needest from me, well, I say it's cheap enough, and I say, yes, it's a bargain! <laughs> <laughs> Hereupon, we both agreed, all that we two do agree to, to secure my solemn deed, to prevent all the repentance from you and Elsie, are to call with a story grim and gory. Oh, Miss Fairfax died and all, I declare to you to swear to. I to swear to. I declare to. I to swear to. I declare to. I to swear to. You to swear to. I declare to.
In return for your heart, you are making undertakings. You instruct me in the art of amazing, wonder raising, of a jester, just a free transition, high ambition, and a lively wannabe, wag a wagging, never flagging, wag a wagging, never flagging, wag a wagging, never flagging, never wagging, wag a wagging, wag a wagging. And no sign of poor Colonel Fairfax. <laughs> the dolts. They seek him everywhere, except within a dozen yards of his dungeon. <laughs> so, I am free. Free. <laughs> free but for the cursed haste with which I ran headlong into the bonds of matrimony with, well, with heaven knows whom. From what I remember, she should be young, but even had her face not been concealed by her kerchief, I doubt that in my then plight I should have taken much note of. Free! <laughs> Castle bonds were but a thread of silk compared with these conjugal fetters that I, fool that I was, placed upon mine own hands. From the one I broke readily enough, how, how to break the other? Once a time, a prisoner still, a prisoner still. Ah, is not one so tired, a prisoner charge Elsie Maynard. Well enough, sir. She quite regains her strength and leaves us again tonight. Thanks to Dame Carruthers' kind nursing, eh? Juice to the old witch. It's but a sorry trick you played on me, sir, to bring the fainting girl to me. 
gave the old lady an excuse to take up her quarters in my house. For the last two years, I've shunned her like the plague. What a day if she would have married me. Good Lord, here she comes again. Arlene, go! Nay, hey, Sergeant Merrill, don't go. I have something of grave import to say to thee. It's coming. Faithfully thinks I'm not wanted here. Nay, Master Leonard, I have not to say to thy father that his son may not hear. Ah, yes, I am one of the family. I have quite forgotten. Now, it is about this Elsie Maynard. A pretty girl, Master Leonard. Aye, as fair as a peach blossom. What then? Oh, she hath a liking for thee, or I mistake not. With all my heart. She's as pretty a maid as you find on a midsummer then day's be month. warned in time, and give not thy heart to her. Oh, I know what it is to give one's heart to one who will have none of it. Oh, she knows all about that. <laughs> Why is my boy to take heed? She's a good girl, Dame Carruthers. Good enough for what I know, that she is no girl. She is a married woman. A married woman? Tush! Poor lady. She's betrothed to Jack Point, the lieutenant's new jester. Ah, tush in your teeth, old man! As my niece Kate sat beside her bedside today, this Elsie slept. And as she slept, she moaned and groaned, and turned this way and that way, and how shall I marry a man I have never seen, quoth she. And then, an hundred crowns, quoth she. And then, is it certain he is to die in an hour, quoth she. And then, I love him not, and yet I am his wife, quoth she. Is it not so, Kate? Aye, aunt, tis even so. Art thou sure of this? Aye, sir, for I wrote it all down in my tablets. Now, mark my words. It was of this fair fact that she spake, and he is her husband, who has swallowed my kirtle. Is it true, sir? Oh, true, why the girl was raving. Why should she marry a man who had but an hour to live? Marry? There were those who would marry but for a minute, rather than die old maids. I, I know one of them. <laughs> Strange adventure maiden wedded to a groom she'd never seen.
my mysterious bride is none other than this winsome Elsie. Oh, but in my hand is no ill plunge in fortune's lucky bag. I might have fared worse with my eyes open. Oh, she comes. Now to test her principles. It is not every husband who has the chance of wooing his own wife. <laughs> Mistress Elsie. Master Leonard. Thou leavest us tonight. Yes, Master Leonard. I've been kindly tended, and I almost fear I'm loath to go. And this Fairfax, wast thou glad when he escaped? Oh, why, truly, Master Leonard, it's a sad thing that a young and gallant gentleman should die in the very fullness of his life. Then when thou didst faint in my arms, it was for joy at his safety. It may be so. I was highly wrought, Master Leonard, and I am but a girl, and so when I'm highly wrought, I faint. And now, may I say that I am consumed with a parlous jealousy? Thou? And of whom? Why, of this Fairfax, surely. Of Colonel Fairfax? Aye. Can I be frank with thee? Elsie, I love thee. Ardently, passionately. Elsie, I have loved thee these past two days, which is a long time. <laughs> and I would fain join my life to thine. Oh, Master Leonard, thou art jesting. Jesting. May I shrivel into raisins if I jest. I love thee with a love that is a frenzy, a love that is a fever, a love that eateth up my heart. What sayest thou? Thou wilt not let my heart be eaten up. Oh, mercy, what am I to say? Dost thou love me? Or hast thou been insensible these two days? I love all brave men. Oh, nay, there is love in excess. I thank heaven there are so many brave men in England, but if thou lovest them all, I withdraw my thanks. Oh, I love the bravest best. <sighs> but, sir, I may not listen. I am not free. I... I am a wife. A wife? Whose? His name? His days are numbered. <laughs> Nay, his, his grave is dug and his epitaph set up. Come, his name. Oh, sir, keep my secret. It's the only barrier fate could set up between us. My husband is none other than Colonel Fairfax. The greatest villain unhung? The most ill-favoured, ill-mannered, ill-natured, ill-omened, ill-tempered dog in Christendom. What is it very like? He is naught to me, for I never saw him. I was blindfolded, and he was to have died within the hour. And he did not die, and I am wedded to him, and my heart is broken. He was to have died, and he did not die. The scoundrel. Urgent, treacherous villain, that thou shouldst have insisted on his dying first, just to be sure. It is the only way with these fair faxes. I now wish I had. Love, thirsty little maiden. <laughs> A fig for this fair fax. Be mine. He will never know. He dare not show himself. And even if he do, what art thou to him? Fly with me, Elsie. We shall be married tomorrow, and thou shalt be the happiest wife in England. Oh, Master Leonard, I am amazed. Is it thus that brave soldiers speak to poor girls? For shame, I am wed. And not the less, because I love not my husband. I am a wife, sir, and I have a duty. And... Oh, sir, thy words terrify me. They are wicked words, and unworthy of thy great and brave heart. Oh, shame upon thee, shame upon thee. Nay, Elsie, I did but jest. I sought but to try thee. What was that, sir? Why, an alchemist fired from the wharf, unless I'm much mistake. Strange, and at such an hour, what can it mean? Now, what can that have been? A short, so late at night, enough to cause a fight. What can that mortal be? At once the truth declare, my lord, twas I to 
rashly judge for them. My lord, twas he to rashly judge for them. Like a ghost is vigil keeping. All respect and all appalling. I beheld a figure creeping. I should rather call it crawling. It was creeping. It was crawling. It was creeping, creeping. Crawling. It was creeping. It was crawling. It was creeping, creeping. Crawling. On a moment's hesitation, on myself upon him flung. With a hurried explanation to his draperies, I clung. And we close upon another in a rough and tumble smother. And the Fairfax and no other was the man to whom I clung. And the Fairfax and no other clung. The Fairfax and no other clung. The Fairfax and no other was the man to whom he clung. After mighty tug and tussle, he resembled not a struggle. He might dance a stronger muscle, always slipping, fell or juggle. For my clutches quickly sliding, I should rather call it slipping. With a view, no doubt, of hiding or escaping to the shipping. With a gasp and with a quiver, I describe it as a shiver. Down he dived into the river, and alas, I cannot swim. He's a constable, shiver with a muscle, with a quiver. Down he dived into the river, it was very dreadful fear. Ingenuity is catching with a view my king of pleasing of muscles and snatching I should rather call it seizing With an ounce or two a leg, I dispatch him through the edge With, with an ounce or two a leg, he dispatch him through the edge I discharge him without winking, little time I lost in thinking Like a stone lost in sinking I should say a lump of lead He discharges without winking, little time he lost in thinking Like a stone lost in sinking I should say a lump of lead Like a stone, my boy, I said 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 Anyhow, the man is dead, where the stone will lump a leg Anyhow, the man is dead, where the stone will lump a leg the river must be dragged, no time be lost, the body must be found at any cost. To this attend without undue delay, so set to work with what dispatch he may. Yes, yes, we said to work with what dispatch he may.